another round of um, this part two of my Starstruck vlog from for week one. Basically, I just watched um, Blue Bloods that I recorded, and I have to say, I like that show. It's actually pretty good. Um, too bad it's on Friday, but um, yeah, I give that a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So if y'all have a chance to see it, it's on Friday nights at 10 o'clock on CBS. So I would go check it out. It's actually pretty good. Um, because I mean I was focused on it the whole the whole episode. But basically it's about a family of cops. Of three generations of cops. Um, the grandfather in it, he was a cop, but somehow he was forced out of retirement. So I guess he did something bad, I'm not sure. But then his son is Tom is played by Tom Selleck and he's the chief of police. And um, his wife passed away. They didn't say how yet. Um, and he has three sons and a daughter. Um, Donnie Wahlberg is one of his sons, and he's a New York City police detective. And um, it seems that he is a dirty cop. Yeah, because at the very beginning they showed this little um, pin with a certain symbol on it and that he had in his vault in his closet. So I knew they showed that for a reason, because at the very end of the episode, um, which I'll get to that in a minute, but anyways, he's got a younger brother, um, who just graduated from the police academy. Um, he went to Harvard and was supposed to be a lawyer, but he changed his mind and wanted to follow in his family's footsteps and become a cop, because he also had a brother who was also a cop, but he was killed. So anyways, and then they have a sister who is an attorney. So she's not a cop, but she's an attorney. Um, anyways, basically the episode followed this guy. He had kidnapped this girl off the streets. And come to find out that she needed insulin. And she needed insulin within 24 hours or she'd die. So they basically tried to find her the whole episode. And Donnie Wahlberg was the main detective on there with his partner. And he ends up finding the guy and basically does some kind of torture method to get information out of him, like puts his face down in the toilet to kind of drown him and uh, bash his head in a couple times, which in a way he kind of did something good. I don't know. It was bad. It was a dirty way to do it. But, I mean, the little girl was going to die within a few hours if they didn't find her anyways. I'm not saying I condone what he did, but anyway. Um, come to find out that the younger brother, that is PM cop, he was approached by the FBI and played him a clip of the tape of his brother, the one that was killed. Basically, he was working for the FBI trying to find information about this secret, um, secret society thing within the police force called the Blue Templar. And, um, basically, I think... Donnie Wahlberg's character is in the Templar because of the little symbol that he had. the little pin that they showed at the beginning. So he's a part of that secret society. So basically he's a dirty cop. So anyways, the younger brother is going to help the FBI find out about the secret society. And that's going to be interesting because it puts a twist to his show. So it's actually pretty darn good. So I would check it out. It's, it's pretty good. Um, and also watch Dexter and I. Um, but yeah, Dexter was awesome. It was really good. Um, and I cried towards the end because it was sad because you get so attached to these characters after watching it for four years. And, uh, like Rita, I really liked her character. And it kind of brought out the humanity in Dexter because he finds out in the episode he was in love with her and he actually did feel guilt and he was upset and all that stuff so it was like aww but uh yeah so basically Deb and Quinn hooked up in Deb and, Deb and Dexter's I mean uh, Rita and, and Dexter's house hello so basically she was getting some sympathy sex I guess but um she she basically planned the whole funeral and stuff, and Dexter didn't, but, I mean, he was like he was in shock, but 
he had to tell Laster and Cody that their mother was killed, and the way he told it was kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I would have told it that way, but I guess he, how are you supposed to tell kids that, but anyways. Um, basically, he ends up running away, but not for long, but he does kill somebody, like, very sloppy and non-Dexter-like, and, um, yeah, Harry basically tells him that he needs to go back because those people make him in touch with his human side, which I agree, because he did show some emotion, and he did, like, scream, and, like, you know, so basically he felt, he felt pain, um, and he needs to be around that more. Anyways, um, it looks like Quinn is going to become the next dope. You know, Dokes was the cop that did not like Dexter and ends up finding out who Dexter was at the end of the second season ends up getting killed. But anyway, Quinn's becoming the next Dokes. So I think Dexter is going to have to kill him. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but that's going to be like odd if they have two cops that are killed in the same department. I don't know. Anyway. But, um, yeah, I will say Dexter's going to be doing some more killing within the season. Um, is as his sort of therapy. But anyways, it, it's weird how you root for a serial killer. It's just strange. It puts a twist on everything. Um, you're not supposed to condone that type of thing, but yet he has some humanity in him. And you want him to be good, and you want him to be okay. But I have a feeling that at the end of the season, I think you might get caught, or someone might find out, and Deb might even find out. I don't but somebody's going to find out, and I think he's going to have to be on the run next season, if they do do next season. But I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. But anyways, the show is actually pretty good, so check it out. It's on Showtime at 9 p.m. on Sunday. But anyway. Okay, the other shows I watched, I watched Medium that I just recorded, so I watched that tonight after Dexter went off. Um... It was a pretty good episode. Basically, it was like a Freaky Friday type episode where Allison and one of her daughters switched places. It was very weird, but they had to solve a crime about this. These internet videos of somebody behind the camera was persuading this homeless man on the street to do certain things for money. And he would do it, like pull out his tooth for $30, and he would do it. And the person filmed this and would put it on like a YouTube type site. But anyways, it was interesting, and it ends up being, um, they think it ends up being one of uh, Bridget's, like, maybe, possibly, boyfriend. But anyways, um, it's not him. He does film videos of the guy doing it, but the last film that was posted of the guy getting killed was posted by the, own, the son of the homeless guy, because basically the homeless guy was worth a lot of money. So anyways... It was a pretty good episode. It was pretty funny, but it did remind me of the movie Freaky Friday with like Lohan or the, you know, the original. Um, and yesterday I watched Grey's Anatomy in private practice. Um, Grey's Anatomy was pretty good. Um, it sort of was like, a, I don't know, like three months later or something like that type thing. Oh, what the hell's going on? Anyway, Meredith was not cleared for surgery because they think she's not telling the truth about everything, which is true because I think she's still upset over her whole miscarriage and she still hasn't told Derek about her miscarriage. So I don't think he's going to be very happy about that, but it seems like he has this complex now where he thinks just because he lived that he can do high-risk stuff and do this adrenaline, high-adrenaline type stuff, like going 125 miles per hour on the expressway. Um, and he keeps getting, you know, arrested for reckless driving. <laughs> um, and so yeah, that's interesting. It's a different side of Derek we're not used to, so I think he's going to end up doing a lot of different stuff that's going to be surprising for his character. Um, Christina got married to Owen. Like, what? Basically, she's afraid to be alone, and so she's traumatized, I guess. They all have a form of PTSD, postpartum depression. Post-traumatic stress disorder, sorry. Anyway, um, Lexi basically had a breakdown. She ended up being admitted in the, in the psych. Um, 
So yeah, that was interesting, but she's not anymore. She got cleared for surgery, but I think her and Mark are going to end up getting back together. Um, what else am I missing out? Alex is being a jerk again, trying to sleep around with girls and pretending like nothing happened. That's interesting. Um, Bailey is a mess. She is a mess. Which, who would blame her because one of the med students died in her arms. That, and that was sad. That was pretty sad. Um, basically that's about it. Private practice was pretty good. Sam and Addison didn't end up working, but they ended up getting back together at the end of the episode or trying it out again. I don't know. Um, I still can't believe Dell is gone. They got rid of the hot guy on the show. They need another young hot guy because now there's old dude. I don't think they're old, but there's nobody that attractive, I don't think. But anyways, um, Violet and Pete got married, but she ended up walking out at first. And I thought it was going to be like a runaway bride type thing, but then she ends up, they end up getting married. Um... Charlotte and Cooper are getting married. Interesting. Um, there was a sad moment within the episode that kind of made me almost tear up. One of the characters from Third Rock from the Sun, I can't, I can't think of his name right now, but anyway, he played a um, mentally challenged um, person. Uh, he was the young brother of one of the guys that needed a kidney transplant because he was going into kidney failure. But, um, basically that guy was an idiot and put his own brother into a home. Well, his brother didn't understand the whole process, of, but he really didn't want to give a kidney to his brother. So they didn't give him a kidney, but then his brother ended up rejecting the kidney and was going to die. And it was, it was a really sad episode. It was really sad. Um, oh, The Mentalist is the last show I'm going to talk about. Um, The Mentalist. Was, was pretty good. Um, Patrick is still going on about, um, still upset about um, what his psychic friend that ended up getting kidnapped by Red John. But anyways, hopefully they'll show more of Red John now that we at least heard his voice. His voice is a little, little creepy. But wouldn't it be weird if Red John was one of the characters he worked with, was one of the people he worked with? Wouldn't that be weird? Or somebody he knew. I don't know. Anyways, but I heard something about we won't find out who Red John is until like the last, the very last season. Which I'm like, how long can you really drag something like that out? But anyways, um, Patrick and Jane, I mean, uh, Patrick is Jane, sorry. <laughs> Him and Lisbon need to hook up already. Um, he needs some loving. <laughs> but anyways, other than that, that show was pretty good, and I can't wait until next week because his brother-in-law is somehow involved. I didn't even know he had a sister. So anyway, um, anyways, other than that, I will post another one of these videos next weekend for week two of my Starstruck vlog of Fall TV. Um, if you want me to review certain shows or talk about certain shows, I'm not going to talk about every single show I watch. I will pick certain ones each week to talk about, like the ones that really piqued my interest, but anyways, um, if you want me to review certain things and talk about it, leave it in the comments below, and I will get to that. Other than that, check out my new Kate's Bloody Vlogs. I've had to post it in two parts, because there's so much about season three I had to talk about, and I didn't want to leave anything out, so there's two parts to it that I had just posted, so watch that, and this will be posted in the morning. But anyways, talk to you guys later, leave me comments.